Hello and welcome to another training video. Now in this video we're going to be carrying on looking at our calendar table for creating a custom calendar for Power BI. Now the reason we need to do this is if I show you Power BI here we have our sales figures and we currently have them aggregated by individual months. And if you look over here these are the hierarchy that are produced according to our date. So we have year, quarter, month and day but we can't use any custom accounting periods for example and that is what we want to do. We also want to set our first accounting period to start in April because that matches our financial year. So this is the Excel file we looked at previously. I have a start date, a finish date and if I click the button to fill down the dates. But what I've done is I've added in a table which has accounting periods and I'm going to show you the formulas that I've used in here and how we build up this table. Now the reason I've used the 4th of April 2020 as my start date is if we look at this calendar here we'll see that the 4th of April is a Saturday. Now I want the Saturday to be my first day because actually I want the Friday to be the last day of every accounting period so that means that the Saturday would be the first day. As I said our uh, financial years here in UK, a lot of companies tend to start in April, run through to March. So the 4th of April is the first Saturday in April. So that makes sense that that's the first day of my first accounting period within the year. Okay, so let's jump back into here. I've got the 4th of April. I've run through the entire year and then just gone to the end of 22 just to be safe. If I click fill dates it now fills in all of the available dates between those two dates and this is a table called TBL calendar. Now on my accounting periods what I've done is I've got that date there being fed through from the other sheet whatever's in A2 in other words what we chose as our start date that's the first date of my first accounting period. Now if that's different, if it's not the same date that you've chosen in your calendar, just come through here and change that so it's not matching. Um, now the date below there, what I've done is I've said it is the same as the day above plus seven times however many weeks there are in that accounting period. And that's what I've done going down. Um, here we have our 445 pattern. So if I drag that down what we're going to end up with is the 445 pattern coming down but because I want that to copy the cells not fill the series and I also don't want this to auto fill so I'm just going to check that the formula there is correct and then double click to fill down that formula. These have come up with a green triangle saying it's inconsistent because the very top cell doesn't have exactly the same formula in it and I'm happy with that. I don't mind. Um, now this table here, as we saw, is called the DAP, so Dimension Table AP for Accounting Periods. I'm just going to hit Save, and then what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to point our Power Query from Power BI. We're going to have to point our query at that Excel file. So I click on Excel. I go to my calendar, and I want those two tables. So I want the uh, the calendar with all the dates in it and I also want my accounting periods. Now I'm choosing the tables which are the things with the blue tops not the sheets which have the sheet tabs at the bottom. I'm going to transform. The reason I need to transform every time is I have my data type detection turned off so I need to manually specify my data types every time. I prefer doing this. It's entirely up to you if you do or not. So I want these to be, uh, I want to be date not time. So I'm going to delete that step that needs to be a date and of course in the DAP that also needs to be a date and in this one that's going to be text and this is going to be a number. Now I can see here that I didn't fill down my accounting periods so at any time I can go back to the Excel and edit it and what I can do is just double click to fill down and when we get to the end of our 12th period, I then want to start my AP21-01 and then I can double click to fill that down and again if I get down here I could say this is AP22-01 
O1 and then carry on filling down from there. Or I could decide if I don't want to go that far, I could right click and simply delete those table rows. Now I need to save that. Go back into Power BI. All I do is hit refresh preview. That'll refresh and I've now got the rest of those dates or APs now filling in. And that's always possible if you forget something in the Excel, you can always go back and change it. Um, this is if you're working with Power BI. If you're working with Excel, it doesn't like opening another Excel if it's already open. What we're going to do now is we're going to take these APs and we're going to add them to our calendar table. Remember, this has one of every day between the start and finish of our periods. So on this one here, we're going to merge the query and we're going to merge it together with DAP and we're going to choose the date column and the start of AP column. It's matched 24 because I have 24 accounting periods in my two years. I click OK and it's matched them and each of these tables has brought across all of the information from the DAP. I'm going to expand it so I can see it for every single one. I don't want all of the data, I just actually want the AP name and I don't want to use the original column name as a prefix because that will give me DAP.AP name, which I don't want. So I click OK, it just gives me the AP name. Now all of these are null because the AP name only matched the start day of each period. So all I need to do is transform and fill down and that will now fill it in so I get my AP1s all the way down until it starts with the AP2 start date and then it's got AP2s running down. Now I can use these here, or this one, in my data modeling. Now I don't need this one to load to my data model so I just it don't enable the load. I do want this one in my data modeling so I'm going to close and apply so that loads it to the data model. And now I need to set up a relationship with that. So as soon as this is finished, I'm going to go into my model and create a relationship between date and my calendar table, date. And I should get a many to one relationship. So this will filter in that direction. I'm also going to make sure that I don't have my date field visible in the modeling window. So I must choose this date field, not any other one. I go back here, you'll see here this is the date one that I said I didn't want to use. I'm going to remove it. And in fact, I'm not using the date, I'm using the name of the AP. So there we are, we now have the AP names all at the bottom. And we have the total, the sum of all the quantities within each of the APs. But by default, it's sorted descending by the values. So I'm going to change it so it's sorted by the AP name. And that's now sorted descending by AP name. I want it ascending by AP name. So we now have AP 2010, 2011, 2012, and then 21, 1, 21, 2, and so on. So these three here, 10, 11, 12, were January, February, March from 21. But because our financial year starts in April, they were financial year last year. And this is the first period, first accounting period within this year's financial year. So AP 21, 0, 1. My data only spans a year, so that's why it only goes up to the ninth period within this year, which is in fact December. Or pretty much December. Okay, so that in a nutshell is how we add our uh, custom columns to a calendar for APs. In my upcoming videos, I'm gonna be looking at adding different types of custom columns, including holidays, working days, days of the week, and whether a day is a working day or not, which can be very useful if you want to calculate working time between two dates. I hope you guys have found this useful, and as always, thank you for listening.